All right, so we're gonna change the oil in the 600 um, shadow, and uh, I'm gonna walk you through just, it's kinda hard, some of the video, because the oil plugs underneath, but I'll do my best to show it to you. A um, Couple things I wanna point out is, there is an oil filter on this, and it's about mid-engine in the back here, toward the back of the engine, underneath, and the oil plug is right on, underneath the engine, right in here. So it takes a 17 millimeter wrench. The other thing I want to point out is that this is where the oil is filled, the filler hole, and it's got a dipstick. And when we put the 2.38 quarts of Honda 1040 motor oil back in here, we're gonna stand the bike up so that it is level like this and then we're gonna reach down there and check it so it's between those two indicators as I'll show you. Now the other thing is there is the oil light which is right here and so when you go to start the bike after the oil change it's gonna be on briefly until the oil fills the filter and then it will turn off. Now I've got oil in this bike so it shut off right away but don't be worried when you first start the bike and give it about, I don't know, five, six, seven seconds before that light goes off. So um, so we're gonna begin the process now, but I just wanted to point out those few things. One additional note is, is that you wanna take the bike out and warm it up and get it nice and hot. So when you change the oil, you get all the contaminants out of it. So take it out, warm it up, and then bring it back and start, uh, start your process of changing the oil. Check this out, so here's where the oil plug is and I got the bike propped up on a piece of wood here so I could show this to you but if you look right there that's the oil plug right there I got my finger on so I'm gonna pull it I've already loosened it and I'll tell you it was a 17 millimeter um, combination wrench get my light all full of oil I'm going to pull it out. And there it is. And there's the I'm going to let the oil drain out, but the oil filter is right up underneath right there. And I'm going to show you how to take that off next. All right, I don't have the right tool for this, so I'm going to use a strap wrench. And I basically wrap it around the filter, and then I put a uh, combinator, or a um, ratchet. I put a ratchet on this end right here and I turn it loose. Now I've already loosened this one, so I'm gonna just take it out. Now you see as I'm loosening the, I'm, I've loosened the filter, now I'm loosening it by hand. And it will leak oil, just like the drain plug. And so I got a big enough drain pan to cover both the filter and the drain plug spat, spot. Now what you wanna verify is that the O-ring for the oil filter is still on it. If that O-ring were to stick on the engine, which it sometimes does, then you will have a heck of a leak when you start the bike, when you have two O-rings. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how I took that filter off. Now if you had the right tool, which I didn't, you would basically have this filter and you'd have this little tool here that when you put a um, <clears throat> ratchet in it and you turn it, it naturally tightens up and grabs the filter and so when you go to take it off, it will actually start to uh, loosen the filter. Okay, I didn't have that, so I used the strap wrench. And basically, this little strap wrench is super handy because you can take all kinds of things off. And a lot of the times, if I don't have the right tool for oil filter, this works perfect. So same concept. You just turn it, and then you put your ratchet in it, and basically it'll tighten up on that filter and turn it so it turns it out. Okay, like that. And so that's what I do with this strap wrench. So now I'm going to take the filter. I'm going to pull a little bit of, I just take a little bit of the used oil in the pan there and I put a little oil seal on the new filter just to make it seal better. And then I'm going to, whoops, drop it. Okay. So I took the strap wrench and I tightened it a quarter turn and so that's good and tight. You can't loosen it by hand. And the key to this is you don't want your filter getting loose and leaking oil and run your bike out of oil. So anyway, I'm done draining the oil. 
and putting a new filter in. Okay, what I did now is I tilted the bike back down so that I drained the rest of the oil out of it. And so you see right there, it's actually got more coming out. So I'm gonna let that finish. I got plenty of time. I like to get all the oil out. And then I wanna show you what oil I'm gonna put in it. So I'm gonna put the Honda oil in it, which is 10W40, um, this GN4. Um, I would normally recommend Amsoil uh, full synthetic and buy the stuff at the motorcycle shop because it's made for clutches. It's made for a wet clutch. You don't want to just use regular motor oil in your bike. You want to use something that's formulated for motorcycles. Um, my wife doesn't really drive this bike a lot. She might put a couple thousand miles on it at the most. So uh, I just use regular standard oil, but on my bike I use Amsoil synthetic because um, I, I really work my bike a lot harder. But anyway, um, I'm going to let that drain, put the plug back in, give it a little snug, and then uh, we're going to add oil. Alright, plug is back on. As you can see there. Hopefully. Sorry about the terrible video. Oil changes are always so hard to film because it's underneath. But I'm going to put my 17 millimeter wrench on it. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. For all you old mechanics out there remember being taught that and then like I said it doesn't have to be super tight just tight enough to keep it from leaking and so if you don't put you know your hand too far down the wrench you won't over lever it this is aluminum so you can strip it out um, so there's my oil plug it's in now I'm ready to add oil <clears throat> this is the side of the bike we're going to add the oil to and there's where your dipstick is and so I've already loosened it, as you'll see. And there it is. Now here's the thing the manual is going to tell you to do, and you need to do this, is it's going to take a little over two quarts of oil that I'm going to put in here. And then I'm going to check the level when I stand the bike up, and I'm going to sit on it so that I can keep it you know, level securely. And then I'm going to pull this dipstick up and check to see that the oil is right between the marks. So um, I'm going to begin uh, putting my oil in. There's my filter, it's a, or my funnel's a little long. You don't need one this long, but it's the only one I have that fits in that hole, so I'm gonna do that off camera here. Start pouring the oil in. I think this one, I've got, yeah, just, I might be a little short. I got two quarts of oil here. I think I need 2.38's what the manual said. So I'm pretty much gonna pour all this in. And then, we're going to check the level. Now if you overfill it, and a little over full is okay, too over full, like way up on the stick is not. That is not going to be good and you'll have to drain some of it out very carefully without spilling it all out. So anyway, I am going to now check it once I stand the bike up. So to do that, I'm going to get on the bike. I just rolled the filter, the old filter there. That makes a mess. I'm going to stand this bike up and get it so it's so it's level. Straighten out the steering wheel here, as you can see. And now I'm going to put my dipstick back in and check it. And uh, see I'm a little bit low, so i got to get more oil. I do not have enough. There's the oil light on your um, bike and mine was on when I first started the uh, engine after the oil change because it has to actually go through the filter and create pressure to get it to um, turn off. So it stays on for a few seconds and then after you let the bike idle it will shut off. So um, we're good to go. All I gotta do is tighten the cap and uh, now I've added that extra oil, tighten the cap and uh, we're ready to ride. So anyway, that's it. Hope this is helpful to you.